Hello, this is Mrs. Howard, and I'm really excited to show you how to create your Egyptian cartouche with your name written on it in hieroglyphics. So let's get started. The first spot you need to go to is the website, Write Like an Egyptian. We need to create your name in hieroglyphics. So I'm going to go ahead and type in my name and click the word inscribe, and it will generate a hieroglyphic symbol for each letter of my name. This needs to be snipped now because we need to save it as a JPEG image. If you're on a desktop, you can use the snipping tool in the lower left-hand corner window symbol on your desktop. If you're on a Chromebook, you're going to have to do Control, Shift, and the symbol above the number 6 in order to snip. I'm on a desktop, so I'm going to just open the snipping tool. And what you want to snip is only the symbols. Don't snip the oval shape that's surrounding the symbols, just the hieroglyphic letters. I will save that to my computer so that I can use it Oops. in just a moment. Once you're done with that, you're ready to go to Tinkercad. To get yourself started, you need to find the image generator. The image generator is sometimes hidden. Mine happens to be in the front, but sometimes you have to click on all these down arrows here under Shape Generators and Tinkercad in order to find it. So I'm going to drag the image generator out and put it in the center of my platform. And then I'm going to choose the image that I just saved, that Egypt image, which had all the hieroglyphics on it. So I'll click that and open. And it should take those hieroglyphic letters and put them on that rectangular shape, and it sure did. So that's step one. Step two might get a little bit tricky because we have to do some rotating and we're going to be using two more shapes. So I'm going to click the shape symbol up here and find the round roof geometric shape. When I drop this on the building platform, it is going to look rather large. We will adjust it and rotate it so it looks just right. So I'm going to place that down on the building platform. As you can see, it's quite enormous. It's not at all the size that I want. In order to create an oval shape which reflects a cartouche, we have to move this around a bit. So my cartouche shape right now is a width of, looks like 2.5 millimeters, and I really want that only to be 2 millimeters. And it looks like it's 4.4 millimeters wide. I like even numbers, so I'm going to get that to either 4 or 5, depending on what you prefer. I'm going to go with 5. So now this also has to have a width of 5 millimeters so that it will line up nicely. So I'm going to reduce this down to a width of 5 millimeters. And I'm also going to change the same thing with respect to the height down to 2 millimeters. Actually, that doesn't want to be 2. We're going to make that a little taller. We'll keep that 3. I want my 2 millimeters to come in to play this direction. So I'm going to reduce this to 2. So now I have this teeny tiny little dome shape that needs to get rotated in order to put it into place. When you want to rotate something, um, a, a direct angle, it's going to be 90 degrees. That's going to take it from being this straight up and down to lying flat on its side. If you can't see the rotating symbol, it's over here. So let me see, it's a little bit hidden for you. You've got three little rotation symbols and they tell you the direction you're going to rotate. I want to lie this flat down, so this is the rotating symbol that I'm going to use. As you can see, that's going to give me 90 degrees. Now it's lying down flat. I then need to slide it into place near the rectangle that has my hieroglyphic symbols. This is tricky and it might take you a little bit of time to get this just into place just right. I do know that it's the width that I want. It's going to be the same width as the cartouche, but I have to position it into place so it lines up. And that can be tricky, so you're going to have to do a lot of wiggling and sliding to get it just where you want it. And you're definitely going to want to use these tools to make sure everything's lined up. It can't print. The 3D printer can't print things that are floating in the air. So you have to make sure that they're lined up, connected, and flat on the building platform. So once you're pretty sure you've got it into place and connected, you're ready to do the second one of those round roof shapes. The good news is you can duplicate the one you've already created, and then all you have to do is flip it over. So I'm going to duplicate this one by doing Control C, which is copy. I'm going to click in some random spot and Control Paste will paste it. Now I can start to slide it where I want it to be. And the last step is just going to be to rotate it 
90 degrees once again. Nope, Eight, 180 degrees this time because it's got to be all the way over to the other side. So that's a 180 degree rotation and I'm almost ready to move it into position. I'm going to do it from the top because I think it'll be a little easier for me to slide it out from the top. And once you have everything lined up the way and you've checked it and it looks good to you, what you should have is something that appears to be an oval shaped cartouche. My edges are hopefully lined up. I've got two millimeters there. I am going to be checking to make sure all my measurements are the same. So I have three here. It is really important that you check to make sure the widths are the same or it'll look a little bit unusual because it won't match. So I'm pretty confident that that is the way I want it. In order to save your creation, what you want to do, look at it from the top, is you want to make sure everything is selected. So I'm going to click one item, hold the shift key, second item, keep the shift key held down, click the third item, and I'm going to click Design and Download for 3D Printing. This here, Download the Selected Shapes, three shapes selected, must be checked, and we're creating an STL file. And as you can see, that downloaded over here. This is the file you're going to be turning into me on Google Classroom so that I can print your Egyptian cartouche. I hope this is helpful. I know you can do it. I can't wait to see how these turn out. Have a good one. Bye.